Hello and welcome back to our All About Accessories series with Fordham. I'm Melissa Muir. Today I'm going to show you one of the processes that I use when I'm using the flex shaft or a micro motor to polish my pieces. In this case, I have a bracelet with multiple bezels and I need to clean up a lot of different solder joints. So let's jump in and take a look now. The next thing we need to do is clean everything up, blend all of our joints, make sure that they all look good. We also need to clean up anything that needs addressing on our bezels. These are looking pretty decent, but like down here on the square one, I can see a little bit of a seam that needs to be blended in. And again, I just want to go through and clean, clean up each of these joints and make sure that everything is looking pretty good there. First thing I'm going to do is round out these corners. We just want to make them nice and comfortable. Okay, I think I've done everything that I can with this flat file. So now I'm going to employ my micro motor and clean up some of these additional joints. I'm going to start with the more abrasive black silicone wheel. Now, I want you to know that this silicone wheel started out as a cylinder. So totally straight sides, flat top. As I've used it, you can see where grooves have been uh, worked into that. Sometimes it's desirable because you can put it onto a wire and get that groove in there and kind of conform it to that wire. You can also use it to like come in onto an area kind of like that. So you can use a diamond file to reshape these however you want to do that. So just be aware that that's okay. And it's also going to somewhat do this naturally as you work into different types of surfaces. Now once again on this, you want to make certain you have a mask, you have safety gear, as far as glasses, pull your hair back. So first thing I'm going to do is bring the silicone polishing abrasive into this and I'm going to work a little bit more on these joints. I have already filed them down, but now they just need a little bit of blending. I also want to make certain that everything feels good, that I don't have any bumps that are scratchy or sharp points that might make wearing this bracelet uncomfortable. Now here I also want to concentrate on that bezel and just smooth out that join that I have right there. If you have too little solder in there, you're going to have a little bit more difficult time. So hopefully you've got enough solder onto these points that you can just go in and blend those down. So as I continue to blend this, you'll notice that this silicone abrasive I'm using continues to shape. My point is getting a little bit finer at the tip and it's also maybe even getting a little bit shorter. And that's just going to happen as this wears away. It is important to note that as I'm doing this blending, I'm not moving a whole lot of metal here. This is going to be something that's a little bit gradual and maybe a little bit slow for what you're thinking. So I really want to take the time to prep this before I get to this stage and that is going to be done with my files. So you make sure you kind of work all of that out. Obviously the very best thing that you can do is do a proper soldering job to begin with and that way then you won't have as much cleanup. Now it's important to note also that anytime you move from one abrasive to another, everything needs to be cleaned up. So you'll see that I've got a lot of stuff here on my bench pin. I'm going to have to swap that out, clean it up before I move to the next stage. Then I'll have to wash my piece off as well. We don't want any residual of the more coarse grit as we move into finer grits of polishing or finishing. So here I'm just finishing up, just again, continuing to blend all of these different joints and then we're ready for our next stage. Now these are looking pretty well blended. Now you'll see the mess that I've made with the silicone wheels. So it is very, very important that we clean this up, we wash off the bracelet before we move on to the next stage of anything. So once I've hit this with the silicone and I've cleaned everything off, I'm gonna come back in here with the blue silicone wheels. I like these because these really blend things in. They remove a lot of those fine scratches. And you can really see that if, you, if you're able to get under some kind of magnification. But I do like these and I will come in also and just clean up around my bezel. So here I'm using one that is kind of a bullet shaped. And then I'm also going to use 
uh, this flat disc one. It's just about a millimeter and that really allows me to get into some of these little tighter areas that uh, might be more difficult with even with a point like this because unless you get that point really fine you're not going to be able to work your way into some of those but I want to be able to get into some of these tighter spots so that's kind of what I'm going to work on this time now just as before even though I've changed the accessory that I'm using I'm still going over the exact same spot so still going over the seams on those bezels still hitting all of the different little joins and making sure everything is blended in it's smooth and it's even uh, this is a very mild abrasive but it's really really good at removing any of the scratches that were left over from the previous abrasive so this one really kind of finishes up that pre-polish now that we have the silicone, we've kind of rubbed everything in, so we've kind of blended it together. Now it's time to take this to whatever polish we're going to take this to. I don't have a really good polish on here yet, and even if I'm going to patina this, I still want to take it to a little finer polish. So I'm going to pull in my felt and my bristle brushes and we are going to do everything with a Tripoli. So right here especially, we are going to have to use the bristle brushes. Trying to do this even with one of our radial discs, we're going to have a really hard time getting into some of these areas, especially up here by this bezel and the tube setting. So I think our bristle brushes are going to be our best bet. So we'll get in, we'll pull in that Tripoli, and then we'll take it up to a nice polish with the Red Rouge. For this, I'm going to use the white horsehair. So it's pretty stiff, and it's going to get into these areas really, really well. And that's kind of important right now. Using a stiffer brush with Tripoli, which is a cutting compound, is going to have a little bit more of an aggressive cutting. So again, if I need to remove any kind of scratches or dents or divots or anything like that, then I want to use an abrasive that is aggressive with an aggressive brush. Now this is a white horsehair, which isn't too stiff, but it definitely has enough power that it can get into areas. Now that this is all cleaned up, we're going to move to our Red Rouge. So again, I've already swapped out my bench pin, and now I'm gonna come in with the cotton and the muslin buffs, just to kind of polish everything up. Now Red Rouge is a polishing compound, so this is going to just make things nice and shiny. This allows you to really smooth things out. You want to have everything pretty much ready to go at this point, so you shouldn't see any scratches, you shouldn't see any, any kind of surface mars or anything like that. Then when you go into a polishing compound, you want to use something that is nice and fluffy and soft. Now interestingly, if I'm using a cutting compound, say like Tripoli or any of those, then I want to use a brush or an abrasive that is stiff and will go ahead and help me remove things. But when it moves into a polish, then I want to use something with a soft, touch. So in this case, I'm using a cotton buff, I'm not pushing hard, and I'm allowing the machine and that compound to do the job for me. I'm not forcing anything to happen here. And that's really important when it comes to the polishing. You want a nice soft buff and not a lot of pressure. Because again, we're not trying to remove anything, we're just trying to make it shiny. The cotton buffs are nice because they're fluffy and it allows you to get into various different areas. You can kind of push that down into tight areas and it will just kind of separate and take care of what it needs to do. And here we are finally done. Now I'm going to need to clean this up with hot soapy water before it can be patinaed and be finished. In this video, I have just used some very, very simple accessories. I have a couple of silicone polishing accessories, some of which I have reshaped, as well as a fluffy cotton buff. This allows me to get kind of that finer finish and that nice bright high polish. Like I said in the video, it's very important that you make certain that you clean very, very well in between each of the different steps because you do not want to cross-contaminate any of those different abrasives. 
I'll include links to each of these accessories down in the description of the video. As always, if you like the videos, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell. Make sure you mark it so that you receive all of our notifications and you don't miss any of the videos in this series. In our next video in this series, we're going to continue with the polishing and I'm going to show you a few other accessories that I use to help me make my process very quick and easy. We'll see you guys next time.